Clive Gibb is quickly becoming one of the North East success stories after working with David Burris of Field Music and securing an arena support slot with Kaiser Chiefs. We met up with Trev in his hometown of Newcastle to discuss his musical influences and what we can expect from his upcoming EP. I sort of started as a solo artist in about 2005, um, just doing acoustic material and that sort of developed over time into a band. Um, I was originally in a two-piece band with Norby Price, so we did a, a two-piece for a while. Um, and then I, I played a gig and, and David Brewis heard us play this gig and offered us a chance to record with him. So I essentially sort of like collaborating with field music. So I did what started off as an EP's worth of material and then turned into a whole album. So I spent a couple of years working on that and did a couple of uh, gigs with uh, David and Peter Brewis. Um, and then that developed into Deerheart. And Deerheart were the band that I wanted to take the music I've done with David and Peter and, and play. So we started that project and did a couple of digital uh, releases. Um, but that didn't really sort of go the whole process and, and we disbanded. And that was around about 2012. Um, so I'd already amassed quite a lot of material at that point. Um, and then following that, I started working with Mick. So Mick has Mick Ross has uh, something called Mono Productions that he runs with uh, two other guys, James and Johnny. And they'd produced uh, work for the Lake Ports. And then they did stuff with Tesra Skies and um, Azure Mall. So I became sort of their next release. So we've collaborated on an EP and actually done another five or six songs. Um, so that's been a bit of an ongoing process. Um, but the last year really has been working towards the EP, getting the material honed, and then in the midst of it, uh, an opportunity to play the arena uh, supporting the Kaiser Chiefs so focus has shifted slightly towards a band again. Originally my material was a lot more introspective and this last batch of songs is introspective and I'm now working towards sort of more um, observational type of material you know so I feel like I'm in a place now where how I write music and how I perform is different so it's a bit of a transition so this last bit like this last amount of material really is is almost like a um, uh, a form of closure. So I've done that, and now I'm onto this next thing. So, so in terms of the what's happening next, and like, like you say, it's, it's maybe the change in the lyrics, but is it a change in the the actual music as well? Yeah, um, I mean, obviously, I come from an angle which is guitar and piano based, um, and the music I'm making right now is is, is very much that, but. Um, the next lot of materials kind of encompassing more of the styles of music I listen to than just simply sort of alternative acoustic um, or folky type of element. So like the next material is going to have horns, clarinet, violin, you know, s string section type things. So it'll be a little bit more orchestral. How, how did how did you go about writing material? Um, well, say like "Can't Stop Thinking of You" or something like that. Usually, how I write, um, it's very rare that. And it does happen for a lot of people, and it has happened for me occasionally. But it's very, very rare that I like arrive immediately with an idea. So um, I'll pick up the guitar and have a, a set of chords and a melody and lyrics that all come at once. It's happened three or four times, maybe you know, but not very often. So normally, how how I might write is I'll just be playing the guitar and a line will come out. So I'll record that line and then I'll sort of advance on that. And usually, I have. Um, a set of lyrics already or I have lines, couplets and I'll stitch them together so a lot of the time how I write a song is melody and chords but incorporating sort of very much like patchwork so it's not an automatic process where you just write this feeling out so the irony of especially for singer-songwriters I think the irony is people hear the music and think that must be about A, B or C and it's actually about none of the above